Hey there guys, I am Dr. Anthony Gustin. And I'm Chris Irvin. And we're gonna pop in and let you know how to buy your meat on a ketogenic diet. Yeah, it's kind of the thing that nobody is really talking about is how to make sure that you're selecting. Meat's probably one of the foods you're eating the most of yeah. on keto. Should so, be, should be. Should be yeah. eating the most of, yeah. So selecting the best source is really important. Yeah, so I think that we're gonna kind of approach it in a bunch of different ways, but beef and ruminants, um, chicken and poultry, seafood and then pork and then kind of some miscellaneous stuff so to actually start going all the way down top to bottom what i think is the best to the worst so if you're gonna if you can source this if you can swing it getting wild game is top top notch so these are animals that are eating what they should be eating they're in a natural environment of where they should be and so what they accumulate in their bodies and the way you should maybe think about animals in general before we get even deeper is that animals are basically like repositories for salads like they eat a bunch of stuff in food and they accumulate it all and then you get to eat their accumulation of nutrients. Mm -hmm. So basically like a storehouse of nutrients for you so they collect all this stuff and all this energy for you so that you can then eat in a small amount. And so if you can get an animal that eats a bunch of wild foraged food, that you're doing the best job there. So organ meats of, of wild animals are gonna be the most nutritious things that you can eat as a human, period. Doesn't even, like we're not even talking about ketogenic diet, we're talking about like the most nutritious things that you can eat as a human. Wild organ meats are the best. So you say why the animal eats what it eats is important, but how is that different from any other meat? What yeah. are those animals eating that's different? Yeah, so I think we'll get into that as we break it out. Okay. But if, um, let's say, a, a deer is out eating all this different stuff, not only that, they're living a more real life, and mm -hmm. so they're going to have a, a better, more active life, and they're going to be animals that are closer to things that should be running around. So just like we can take apples or bananas and change them over the course of a long period of time to be sweeter, We've changed that with meat as well. And so like farmed meat, chickens, beef, cattle, stuff like that, even some fish, we've changed and selected the gene pool. So that way these animals are how we want them to be. And so we want animals who are what we've been eating for millions of years and not just the last 10, 15,000 years. And so think about it that way. And then so just like wild plants are more nutritious than farmed spinach, same type of thing. And so we're just gonna have way more nutrients than an animal for that. Yeah. So if you hunt, if somebody that you know hunts, if you can source this stuff locally, um, Eat Wild is a really good website that you can see all the stuff that we're talking about on and see, kind of put in a map in your zip code to see what farms are available around you. Um, but yeah, if you source to, of wild stuff, like that is the number one thing that you could be eating on a ketogenic diet, you're probably missing out on. Yeah. Um, so going into kind of the next step, what most people would probably eat the most of would be beef or cattle, um, red meat, stuff like that. And so there's a big difference here between the quality of meat that we're gonna get. Mm -hmm. And so we have kind of the spectrum. So a lot of factory farm animals eat primarily corn, soy, or grain is what they eat from day one until they're dead and slaughtered. Mm -hmm. That takes about 12 months, okay? And what the, what's good for farmers on that end is that it's cheap to feed them that. They can fatten them up really, really quickly and they can give them to slaughter within 12 months. What's not good is that just like if you were to feed a human a bunch of corn, soy, and um, grains, as we know, like why a lot of people are doing a ketogenic diet, you get really fat and really sick really quickly. Mm -hmm. So basically you're eating fat sick animals. Not ideal, obviously. Yeah. And so going all the way to the other end of the spectrum that we all heard of is grass fed beef. And so why is that good? Well, instead of eating what's essentially crap for the animal, what they should not be eating, we're going to having them eat salads all day long mm -hmm. and accumulating all that nutrition in grass. And so that's a huge difference. However, it's not that simple. It's not as simple as, okay, grass-fed is good, 100%. I would see that at the store and I'm good to go. Unfortunately, um, we have a lot of interesting labeling claims that the government either regulates or doesn't regulate. And so people see organic, they see grass-fed, they say, okay, I'm making an awesome choice. Mm -hmm. Doesn't come that easy. Yeah, yeah, and, and like you said, there's a huge nutrition profile difference between these foods that are, if they're actually grass-fed as opposed to not being, but because this grass-fed movement is starting to catch on and more people are starting to recognize it, obviously the food industry is responding by trying to have these claims made on products that aren't necessarily grass-fed. And I think what we're, we're probably referring to here is probably the lack of grass finish of these meats, right. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and so what will happen is they'll take an animal and have it be grass fed and be out in the pasture eating what it's supposed to be eating until you know 45, 60 days before they bring it to slaughter. And at that point, then they start adding in all these grains in corn and soy to fatten the animal up. 
Mm -hmm. What happens then is like all of the omega-3 fatty acids, all of the butyrate and CLA and stuff like this, it's really, really good in grass-fed meat, all are gone. So it's like it, as if that animal was eating grains its whole life. Mm -hmm. And so unless it says 100% grass-fed or grass-fed, grass-finished, you can probably bet that the animal's actually finished on grain. Right. Unfortunately. Yeah. One of the best places that you can find these foods are at farmer's markets. That's right. one of the places you can find the highest quality meats. That's kind of what I've recently switched over to. I have recently seen um, one of the particular farmers who has, uh, he doesn't finish them on grass, but he finishes them. They're not grains, they're barley and flax that he finishes mm. on them. Do you have a, a take on that? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of different ways to do that. But again, like if, if we're feeding the animal that, like, and, and that's gonna be far better. I mean, the, the barley is essentially a grass. And so right. that's one of those things where like, is it growing? Is it something that is super processed that the animal shouldn't be eating? Is it high in carbs? Mm -hmm. And the answer is no. So like, I, I know another farmer here who does, um, finishes them on like sweet clover or different types of grasses that are higher in different nutrients mm -hmm. to then fatten them up. Yeah. I mean, even if it is 100% grass finished, one of the sad parts here is that you can have a grass finished cow, but a lot of people think that grass finished meat is like too lean and not that flavorful. Well, what happens is because it takes so long for those animals to get to slaughter that they stop it at 24 months and the animal's actually not fully grown yet. Mm -hmm. And so really digging in and learning this stuff and like finding the farms, like you said, farmer's market, interview these people. The questions to ask, is it 100% grass fed, grass finished? How, like, are the animals fully grown when you actually slaughter them? It, it, it can take up to three years for that mm -hmm. to happen, for the animal to get actually big enough where uh, one full year on grain fed gets the same size as three full years on grass fed. Yeah. And so it's harder for the, the farmers to make that money. And so that's why it takes so much more from us as consumers to pay for that price. But you're going to get a much healthier outcome as an animal. Yeah, and that's that's my favorite approach is to have those farmers markets because you're getting it right from the source, so you can ask all of those questions. I know, uh, you know, for instance, one of my favorite places to get meat here is a from a gentleman who has a biodynamic farm, which means that he treats his soil very well. He makes sure that not only that these cows are eating, you know, not that these cows are eating grass, but they're also eating very high quality grass and they're more nutrient dense. And you'll notice a dramatic difference in the way that the meat even looks when you get it. I right. mean, meat from a ground beef from a store versus ground beef from a grass fed, grass finished cow is so much different. And the t like you said, the taste is a little bit different. You will may notice it has a little bit more of a gamey taste, um, but I, I prefer it. And I think that the knowing that it's also more nutrient dense kind of is, is a great thing yep. as well. And you notice the fat is a little bit more um, yellow and it's easier to separate and mm -hmm. less waxy and if it's whiter and waxier and kind of clumpier then you know that animal is probably eating some grains yeah and so obviously not everybody can afford grass-fed another tip here is that using the site eat wild or going to the farmer's market if you buy in bulk so like I usually buy half of a cow at a time um, store as much as, as possible in my freezer and then give away or sell whatever's left it comes up to three four or five bucks a pound Mm -hmm. And so this is a really economical way to, to do that if you can't usually afford like a Whole Foods $35 a pound type of ribeye. Mm -hmm. um, if you can't go grass fed for proximity or whatever and still want to eat meat, totally fine. What I would just recommend is that you then go, if it's grain fed, then go to the leaner side. So all of the bad stuff and inf inflammatory compounds and oxidized fat stays within that fat. And so skip the ribeyes, skip the high fat ground beef, and go more towards like a you know cubed roast or a flank steak or a or like a lean sirloin something like that, and just ditch the fat or trim it off, and don't eat the fat if you're going with a grain fed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think a lot of people don't quite understand how important this really is. I think it's been lately it's been looked at almost as like some hocus pocus of like how important is it actually for these animals to be fed this way and really if you look at like we're talking the nutrient profile of these animals they are dramatically different and not only is like the the micros and different in there but it's also like the pro pro inflammatory fats that are in them you know these grain fed cows contain a lot more omega-6s as opposed to these grass feds that contain a lot more omega-3 and that makes a huge difference on a ketogenic diet i mean one of the fundamental features of a keto diet is we're trying to keep inflammation low. And if meat, especially beef, is a primary food that you're eating and you're consuming a ton of pro-inflammatory meat, that's obviously not going to be the most beneficial way to handle the diet. Right. Eat a sick animal, you're going to be sick yourself. And that's yeah. kind of how it is. I mean, and an additional thing that can, can apply to all of these sources as well is that, yes, we're talking about food quality, but, but when it comes down to it, like I just don't like to support commercial farming and like the awful practices that they have. So like when you're voting with your dollar and supporting these farms that do things the right way, 
I mean, it's ethically for, like, for the animal a, a much better decision as well. Yeah, and it, it's great to support local, like support these local farmers. You go to the farmer's market, for instance, you have a great relationship with these farmers. They'll, you know, save different cuts of meat for you. Like one of the farmer's markets I go to, he has liver waiting for me every week when I show up. So it's, it's great to also support these people who are trying to do things the right way. Yeah. My local farmer here in Austin is Jeff Rusk at Bar Free Ranch. Awesome guy as well. But yeah, I mean, you, like I found him through eatwild.com and, and many other um, farms are on there as well locally. Um, so moving on to poultry. So here again is another huge bucket of terms that's just incredibly confusing. Mm -hmm. And so you have organic, cage-free, free-range, pastured, like what, non-GMO. Like, no antibiotics, that's yeah, another big yeah. one. That's kind of a funny one too. Yeah, yeah, so you actually can't give antibiotics to chickens, it's illegal, but yeah. a lot of companies put that on their packaging. And a lot of these claims like essentially mean nothing. Mm -hmm. And so what, uh, let's just start breaking these down, right? So cage-free of poultry and chickens essentially means that the animal can be in an open room which is not in cages. Mm -hmm. So you can still stuff 3,000 chickens in a room and they'll be all shitting over each other and screaming and eating awful food and like eating corn and soy and grain and all this type of stuff and that's cage free yeah so if you see cage free at a store it means nothing right it just means that they're not individually contained in cages mm -hmm. which is like it, people don't do that anyways like the every like large scale operation is essentially cage free yeah and while that may be slightly better for the animal it's definitely not any better for the quality of your food yeah it's the same thing yeah um, the next step up uh free range means again essentially nothing and so what free range means is that the animals must have access to a certain square footage of land um, for like i think it's up to 15 minutes or 30 minutes a day mm -hmm. and usually what happens is they'll have a giant warehouse of 5,000 chickens they'll have one tiny door that goes to a concrete um, path outside that they open up 15 minutes a day and then they close it that's what free range is mm -hmm. so again a bunch of bullshit skip free range yeah um, then the next step up pastured and so this is where the the chickens are actually out to pasture what's unfortunate about this is that generally that that is the case they it's much much better for the animal you're gonna get better nutrient quality and then you're gonna go out and they'll feed these animals a bunch of feed and so what happens then is like yes they have access to bugs and twigs and weird stuff like that that chickens eat but then the farmer goes out there and just pours feed everywhere mm -hmm. and so then just eats all the garbage right Unfortunate. There's no way to decide with chickens what happens at that point. Mm -hmm. um, then we have the, the next step, which is, is the same type of thing that we like to do is like there's a farm not far from here that I should get duck eggs at and chicken eggs. And I know like they'd feed them scraps from their garden. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're at another granular level that like, there is no labeling to it. Right. Um, generally speaking, with, with chicken and eggs, like get eggs and crack it open and look at the yolk. The, the deeper and darker and more colorful the yolk is, the more that animal ate what it was supposed to eat, mm -hmm. the more that the nutrients are condensed in that yolk. Yep. Um, so that's a huge thing. Um, I think more important with chicken than with beef is if you're getting pretty much any type of chicken, unless it's something that you know exactly where it's coming from, um, go for the lower fat versions, the chicken breasts. Because even more so than beef, chicken had a really, really high omega-6 content, um, especially in the skin and in some of like the, the thighs and, and fats like that. Um, so I would skip that stuff unless you're getting like the, the most high grade chickens you can find, which unfortunately are crazy expensive. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about how small the animal it is and how much energy input takes to raise that animal. That's why like, I just kind of skip on chicken and yeah, poultry in general, just be, unless eggs, like I go eggs, it's a more sustainable thing. And just like to raise a chicken from, from chick all the way to slaughter is one, it's just like nutritionally very poor. You don't get many micronutri micronutrients from a chicken. But also, it's another thing of like, it just costs so much per, per thing. It's like, it's the most expensive thing you could find. Right. Um, so I skip on chickens just due to that usually. But if you want, again, I would choose the leaner cuts over the fattier cuts, unless you know exactly where the chicken's coming from. With eggs, uh, the other thing too, you see a lot of stuff where people are, you know, vegetarian fed chickens. What's your take on that? Well, I mean, the hilarious part is that chickens, like humans, are not vegetarians naturally. Like, chickens should be eating a bunch of different things and, and bugs and worms and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. so, like, again, it's a, it's a marketing hype thing. Um, organic is, like, one step better, but that just means they're getting organic feed. Right. So if I'm eating organic Snickers bars, does that make me a healthy human? Absolutely not. And the same thing goes with chickens as well. Yeah. Is that just because it says organic doesn't mean you're getting a, a healthy animal. Like, yes, you're supporting better causes. It's a step in the right direction, but it's not like a... a 
a switch that says, okay, it was unhealthy before and now it's healthy. It's usually just something that, where they can charge you an extra three dollars a carton of eggs. Yeah, and there, there really is a dramatic difference. You can tell when you have a uh, properly a properly raised egg versus a regular store bought egg. You know, they're the yolks are, are way different color, but even the shells are a lot different oh, too. Yeah. Like when you open it up, you'll see usually a variety of different shell colors as opposed to just like standard 12 white eggs, yeah. you know, so. They're super brittle. And, yeah. yeah, yeah, so it, it is, it's way higher quality and it also tastes way better too. I know when we were in Thailand, for instance, the I was just amazed by how deep colored the, the yolks were when we were out there. And it's because yeah. a lot of the chickens, a lot of the eggs were coming from, you know, they were sustainably, raised and sustainably sourced and everything like that and they were doing it the right way so um, I think f the farmers markets is, a, is another like you said great way to do that a little bit harder to do it in stores when you go to stores you are a little bit more prone to falling victim of the marketing ploys of saying pasture or saying cage free and stuff like that um, but when you go, get to go to the farmers markets you can actually talk to the farmer and ask them what are you feeding them how are they living and that's the most important thing when it comes to the quality right and with eggs I would say you know you can just if you go with really low quality egg um, you're not really getting that many omega-6s in an egg because there's so many good things in there, but you're just not really getting anything out of it. Yeah. So you're getting some protein from it from the egg white, so that's good. But other than that, you're, like, you're not getting the multivitamin just huge punch that you would be getting with an actual pastured raised egg. So that nice yellow, deep orange yolk. Some alternatives to that, if you want to look, again, for local stuff, duck, goose, things like that. Kind of a similar type of a bird, but way more nutrient dense. And again, the, the meat, even the breast, is going to be way darker, usually indicating a higher nutrient profile. Yeah. And so next, which is a kind of a tough one for people, especially on a ketogenic diet, to swallow a tough pill is pork. Yeah. The bacon. Yeah. Bacon is like pork is one of these things where like it, no pig is really raised in, in a proper way. And no. if they are, they're wild. And if they're wild, they're the feral. And like it's just like there is no wild or like wild raised pig. It's just this is the way of it. Yeah. And so and, you know, even the highest end of, fac, uh, of farmed like heritage pork Still trash, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if, if you've ever been to like a farmer or ever seen pigs, you can see that like they will eat basically anything. Yeah. Like they are, they're pigs. They will eat anything <laughs> that is put in front of them. And and just like a lot of farmers will take advantage of this with cows and, and feeding them, you know, really low quality feed, they're doing the same thing with pork. Yeah, and, and even so, like even if they load them up with other stuff and fill them like they, pigs want to get fat and that's what they do, so they want to get them fatter. Um, so what I do here, uh, the ranch I go to actually traps wild boar, and so I'll eat wild boar. Um, if I want to have bacon, I'll just notice that like, sure, bacon's obviously delicious, we all know that, but I think of it more as kind of like a treat mm -hmm. than anything else. So it's kind of like my keto candy, if you will. So it's something that I know is like going to be super high in omega-6 fats, it's not going to be healthy for me. Like bacon is not a health food. Mm -hmm. and this is one of those controversial things in, in keto, we could probably do an entire video on it, but like, bacon is not good for you. No, I want my bacon, I gotta tell you something. Bacon is good for me. This is very You're going to be going to the grocery store. Yeah. <laughs> like literally no bacon is, is, is going to be a, uh, an addition to your health. Yeah. And if you know, we have another video where we talk a lot about dirty keto and, and bacon is probably one of the biggest, um, one of the most common foods used on a, on a dirty keto diet. A lot of people, they start keto and the first thing they say is like, oh, I can have butter and bacon. Those are like the two yeah. things. And you know, we have to remember that just because a food is keto friendly doesn't mean that you should be having a lot of it on keto. Right. So bacon, I'd say limit it. Don't go crazy hog wild on like most people do. Um, skip it. it. You know, you can get definitely better grades than lower grades. And that again is going to be, you can see it in the fat. If you get it from a local butcher, they can kind of suss out, you know, where this pig is from. Like Salt and Time here in Austin does a really good job. Diet you. They like, they have better than not pigs and bacon. So like, Choose more premium and, and if you can, but it's still not going to be like a health food like people think it is. Right. Yeah. Um, moving on to fish. This one is a little bit trickier with micronutrients. So, the, like, there are some farmed fish that are just as high in nutrients as unfarmed fish. And mm -hmm. so, the, actually, the, one of the most nutrient dense foods you can have as a human are shellfish. And so, those doesn't really matter if they're farmed or not because these animals just kind of siphon out everything and they have a really good filtration system and they will accumulate nutrients no matter where they are. Mm -hmm. And so, mussels, clams, oysters, things like that, um, doesn't really matter if they're farmed. So, it doesn't matter if they're wild, it just doesn't matter. Yeah. Load up. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of times people, they're, they're pretty turned off to the farmed fish because they think that since we usually, usually farmed animals aren't quite as good yeah. or like, you know, those, those animals aren't the highest quality, we tend to think the same way about fish. But the thing is, is like we wild caught fish, we cannot control what is in their environment and what they're having access to. And if you, you're seeing all of the, 
you know, the oil spills and all the radiation, all the stuff that we're seeing in the water, uh, we can't really control when we're going for wild caught fish what these fish have access to. So uh, it, it may make an interesting case, case for responsibly farmed fish. Right, yeah, and so this is kind of like a, a little bit of a gray area. So I'd say looking at shellfish, shrimp, things like that, doesn't really matter if they're farmed or not. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of fishing type of fish, and like you said, we can't really control the environment. Wild is better than usually than farmed from a nutrition standpoint if it's more of like a freshwater or younger fish. Mm -hmm. And so for example, like wild salmon, way better than farmed salmon. You can see that even in the example of if you go to a store and see it next to each other, one will be a pale, weird, sick color and one will be like a deep orange. Mm -hmm. Obviously one with more color is gonna be healthier for you and that's gonna be the wild one. That you can just buy online. Um, I, I get like 20, 30, 40 pounds at a time from a few different websites online to so just search wild Alaskan salmon and you can get that super easy. Um, some of the other fish though, like tuna, you know, swordfish, some of these ones that are larger in deeper water fish, not only like, are the fishing practices super unsustainable and destroy the, the ocean and the habitat, mm -hmm. yeah. but because they're so much bigger, like they just live for a lot longer and it can accumulate some of these heavy metals. And so it's not gonna kill you if you eat one or two, but like uh, Tony Robbins, for example, was eating swordfish every day for, for years and had crazy heavy metal to toxicity. And so like, this is one of those things where the, those deeper, um, bigger fish, like, yeah, they might be tasty, but they're just gonna accumulate all these other little fish that probably have a trace amount of heavy metals and, and then store that in their tissues. Mm -hmm. So skip on those, go for like the rainbow trout, the, um, like, the, like I said, the, the salmon and fish like that and, and wild if you can. Is there a particular area that you prefer fish to come from to know that it's a little bit higher quality? Um, I think that just Alaskan salmon is the, is the best. So, okay. I mean, that type of stuff, co uh, coho salmon, um, and you know, even from the Northwest of the United States is a really, really, really good option. Um, but yeah, it's just one of these things where fish is getting tricky. Like yeah. it's changing all the time. So like it's, it's tough to keep tabs on. Yeah, I think um, one interesting place that I would like to see that industry go is towards because, because of the fact that we're tearing up the ocean to farm these fish uh, and it, it's starting to become a problem and as the, the water quality is starting to go down, mm -hmm. I think one thing that would be great to see is start seeing more farmed fish but having it done with better practices, having it done responsibly. I think that would that could make a huge difference in not only ensuring that we're getting great high quality food, we're avoiding a lot of the toxins, but also preventing just you know absolutely destroying the ocean. Yeah. You heard it here, fisheries, we need you. Yeah. Yeah. responsibly done though <laughs> so to recap we have eat wild game if you can organ meats obviously um grass fed grass finished look to see how how long the animal's been alive and talk to the farmer if you can at farmers markets um poultry go for pastured and even at that point it's kind of hard to, to suss out what you're getting um look for the egg yolk color as far as kind of a good indication if that, if that egg was more nutrient dense or less um with with uh pigs so yeah, you're not really making a good choice. Go wild boar if you can. It's gonna be like really low in fat, but still pretty good. And then with fish, eat shellfish in infinity if you want, and then get some wild fish that are more freshwater or smaller, smaller living fish. Yeah. So if you guys have any more questions and types of food that you eat, maybe how you can source it and where you can source it from, just leave a comment below and we'll get back to you guys. If you like the video, please like it, subscribe to the channel. And then if you wanna follow us on Instagram, I'm at DranthonyGustin. And I'm at The Ketologist. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.